My passion and field of work is both complex and controversial. Whenever people hear what I do, they usually put down the glass of wine and look at me with a mixture of curiosity and refusal. It's that, should we stay or should we run moment. Some of them tend to compare me to him, Brian Johnson, and tell me, you just want us to live forever, but without pizza and fun. And I reply, no, I want you to have the pizza, but without falling into a food coma afterward. Or they say, I don't need you. I'm healthy and I want to enjoy my life as long as I can. I don't argue. I don't try to convince them. I just listen. And then something remarkable happens. After they've made clear that they are for sure not the right person for longevity offer, they start asking questions. Can you give more than general recommendations? Can we still eat pizza? And why should I even see a doctor without being sick? And that's the moment I get excited because I know the conversation is shifting. People start to question their assumptions. What if I told you that longevity isn't about restriction, but about understanding your body so you can enjoy life more, not less? For years, I thought my body was unpredictable. Sometimes I had energy, sometimes not. Sometimes I needed food every two hours, and sometimes I could forget to eat. I thought I was moody, sensitive, maybe just not built for high performance, even though my mind was ready. My body often slowed me down. But now I know my body was never the problem. It was talking to me, and I wasn't listening, because no one ever told me how to listen. We all hear the same rules. Eat less, fast more, do cardio. We see a doctor when something has gone wrong and we are sick. On average, we start losing energy in our 40s and we spend the last 12 years of our lives suffering from chronic disease. 12 years. Dementia, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, you name it. But this is not given. In medical school, we learn how to diagnose and treat diseases and what works best for the majority, for the population at large. And this is extremely helpful when it comes to disease. But for prevention, for staying vibrant as we age, that's a different story. Because your body is as unique as your fingerprint. If you want to thrive, you need to understand how you function, not how most people do. No two bodies function the same way. We need a new approach in medicine one that focuses on our biology and our personal data and uses it before we start losing energy or develop chronic disease. The evidence is growing. It's time to change our view on medicine. There's a strange paradox. We know more about our phones than about our bodies. We monitor battery life, we know exactly which apps drain our phone's energy. Meanwhile, your body is at 3% energy and you're like, ah, let me just push it through with two espresso shots. We've learned how to carefully manage our devices, but not ourselves. We ignore the signals our bodies are sending, or we hear them, or we don't know how to read them. Your body is the most advanced technology that you will ever own. And it speaks to you every single day. The question is, are you listening?
let's take a look at some of the signals your body gives you. How do you sleep? Do you wake up refreshed or exhausted? Maybe your brain keeps thinking while you're already asleep. And how quickly do you recover from exercise? Do you bounce back or feel wiped out? Maybe you're overtraining. And how do you feel after eating? Do you feel light and satisfied or heavy and sluggish? Maybe your body has to work overtime to handle something it didn't like. And what about your brain? Ever felt like it's in power saving mode even after a full night's sleep and a healthy meal? Maybe there is low level inflammation going on. Or maybe your nervous system is stuck in overdrive. That foggy, scattered, low motivation state? It's not just in your head. And it's not normal. It's a signal. Because mental clarity has less to do with willpower and more to do with biological precision. One important tool on the road to biological precision is nutrition. It's one of the most personal and misunderstood aspects of health. What nourishes one body might inflame another. And what energizes one person might leave someone else bloated and foggy. Your genes and even more your microbiome shape what works best for you. Oatmeal, for example, is considered healthy. But in some people, even plain oats cause a glucose spike followed by a crash. Not because the food is bad, but because of how their body handles it. Their microbiome, their insulin sensitivity, their metabolism, even the time of the day, all of that plays a role. That post-meal slump, it might not be just digestion. It might be a huge glucose spike, followed by insulin sweeping away your body's energy, leaving you foggy and tired because your brain is running on empty. A signal that your body struggles to stay balanced. So while one person feels light and clear after a meal, the other one crashes. I used to crash hard. One minute I felt fine, the next, nervous, shaky, lightheaded. And really hard to be around. At that time, I worked at the University Hospital in Zurich. A colleague of mine, Sam, always kept snacks on his desk, just for me. He would quietly slide one over when I was crashing. Back then, I laughed, at least once the snack had kicked in. But now I know, my mood swings weren't random. They were data. My body was screaming and I wasn't listening. With a personalized approach in nutrition, we can prevent these crashes. And when our energy stabilizes, our body becomes more resilient and less prone to disease. Because longevity isn't about restriction, but about giving your biology exactly what it needs. Okay, so now we know that listening to our bodies is crucial. And when we pair those signals with biomarkers, we start to speak our body's language. We learn what's really going on and how to fix it before anything goes obviously wrong. There are hidden factors, silent ones, like blood biomarkers. You don't have to obsess over them daily, but they offer deep insight into how your body is functioning. Fasting insulin, for example, a marker of your metabolic health. The constant ups and downs in your blood sugar level, indicated by these typical crashes, leave a trace in your body. Fasting insulin can indicate that your blood sugar regulation gets out of range 
long before even a diabetes can be diagnosed. Or high sensitive CRP, a marker of chronic low level inflammation. It might be the reason why your joints ache or why you have this brain fog. The beauty is, biomarkers don't just confirm what you feel. They help you decode it and act before you get sick. And they're not set in stone. They change with your behavior, with what you eat, what you supplement, how you move, how you recover. And it's not just about comparing your values to general reference ranges. It's about optimal values and finding your own personal baseline. Because what's normal might not be what's best for you. Tracking your biomarkers, starting in your 30s or even later, allows you to catch trends early, before they lead to disease. Imagine watching your fasting insulin or inflammation levels creep up year by year. You're still in the normal range and every doctor will tell you, hmm, you're doing fine. But your personal trajectory says, something's off. And that's your window to act. Science loves longitudinal studies. And guess what? You can run one. With n equals one, you and your data, the one that counts. Show of hands, who of you is wearing a wearable right now? Like an aura ring, Garmin watch? Okay, so I think some of you are already collecting data. Great. Your heart rate variability, which gets measured by these devices, can warn you of illness, overtraining and stress before you feel anything. It's not just tech. It's a mirror to your nervous system. The only question is, are you ready to listen? Speaking of stress, most people think of stress as an enemy. Something to be avoided at all cost. But not all stress is bad. In fact, some stress is absolutely essential. It's how we grow. But you need to find that sweet spot, the so-called hormetic stress. The one that challenges your body just enough to spark adaptation without tipping into breakdown. Too little stress, nothing happens. Too much stress, burnout. It's all about the right dose, but the sweet spot is individual. And it makes sense to find your personal sweet spot to work on two of the strongest predictors of healthy aging. They are both biomarkers that make perfectly sense to measure and follow up throughout life. One is a parameter of your endurance. It's called VO2 max. And it tells you how far you'll get before you're out of breath. The other parameter is your muscle mass as this protects you from inflammation, frailty, and metabolic decline. But both only improve and stay at a good level when you apply the right amount of stress to your body. And there are plenty of studies showing that your chances of being healthy and fit, even at a high age, are extraordinarily good when you're well-muscled and have excellent endurance. These two biomarkers will also shape whether you'll enjoy mountain hikes in retirement or get out of breath walking to the next train station. And that future, it lies in your hands. You can shape it. Let me tell you about a client in our longevity clinic. He's a CEO, this classic high achiever. Marathon training was his meditation or so he thought. But he didn't improve in running despite hard training. 
so we dug deeper. His cortisol levels were sky high. His heart rate variability flatlined in fight or flight mode. His biological age accelerating. His body was in overdrive, quietly sounding the alarm. But he didn't listen. He completely overtaxed his body, so no growth was possible. We pulled back. Less running for him. As for his body, there was not meditation, but pure stress. Instead, focus on strength training and recovery. And both his marathon performance and his biomarkers improved significantly. It's not given to run out of energy or to develop chronic disease. Longevity isn't about fear or sacrifice. It's a new approach to medicine. One that has the potential to transform our entire healthcare system. A step away from reactive treatment toward targeted prevention. No one-size-fits-all approach, and not just collecting data, but responding to it. The data is there. The tools are there. The only thing missing is our attention. Today, after having learned to listen to the signs my body is giving me, I'm much nicer to be around. I don't crash anymore. I have stable energy levels. My body doesn't limit my performance anymore. I feel in sync. And I want that for you too. Because your body has always been on your side and is talking to you. The only remaining question is, are you ready to listen? Mm -hmm.